with that, let me introduce, we have uh, Dean Park with us here this evening to expand more about legal research and how to um, become much more efficient and effective in doing that. So I really thank you for your time this evening. Uh, happy to be here. I'm just doing a quick check on sound. Uh, I realized the reason I'm popping back in here is I realized my screen share needed permission, so I had to quit Adobe Connect for a quick bit. But um, I am back, and I'm very excited for this half hour I have with all of you to talk about legal research. Um, there's going to be a focus in this session about what legal research tools ALU has here for you, available online, as your professor said, which I think is an incredible um, resource and library to have um, accessible online. Uh, but I am going to talk a little bit more broadly as well um, about legal research and just how, at the end of the day, um, whatever your resources are, um, how you're using them is very analogous between, you know, the in-person context and the online context as well. Um, so, first of all, before I get started, I do want to share my screen and just share with the class that um, I have created um, and I will be continuing to build off in this session um, whenever I'm referencing something that can be accessible just by the public, um, even if it is a Westlaw a resource, um, oh, just going to do a quick refresh here. Here we go. Uh, there is actually a page I'm creating in your week two module where it'll just go ahead and refer to those links um, or sites. Most of our discussion about Westlaw will be within the Westlaw system, which requires your username and password. But just for these items, um, they're public sites that don't necessarily need a, a Westlaw password uh, or account to access. So when I'm going over things like that, I will go ahead, mention, drop it here, and of course, um, when I take questions, if there are things that I mentioned that are helpful for the group um, and that, you know, aren't just coming up in Westlaw, then uh, I can keep building off of that here. Um, so just to come back into the session, uh, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today in the broad picture is just um, how to gain more information literacy, really, with uh, the kinds of resources you need for legal research. Um, and, uh, of course, different generations of attorneys have experienced um, different things in terms of what it requires to get your materials. Um, for all of you here at ALU, you have an online law library, and I just pulled up the Student Center Manual, uh, page 47, uh, and this Student Center Manual is at the Law Student Center back at the eLearn system. But this is your version of an online law library you can access here at ALU. Uh, but I'm going to talk first before getting into the specifics here about, you know, how what you're being given here is not necessarily that different from, let's say, um, different uh, online law libraries or, you know, what you would access if you were going to a law library in, in certain ways. And I'll, I'll be clear about that and also talk about the differences as well. So first of all, if you're going into, let's say, the Los Angeles Law Library, you know, what can you expect? you know, from a brick and mortar library, you're going in, uh, there is a library desk with librarians to help yeah, you. And there's typically, you know, many bookshelves that you can go around and explore. And uh, a feature of hard copy legal research is just learning to recognize the different resource 
categories that you can look through. Um, some of them being case volumes, some of them being treatises, some of them being, you know, as you're looking through different jurisdictions and, and um, what can maybe be relevant for you to be researching, uh, you may then be looking up state statutes, federal statutes, codes, all kinds of things that relate to the project that you have at hand. And um, even though the physical process of going to the library and checking books out and scanning through what you're looking through is a different process, uh, you are virtually doing a similar thing when you get into an online law library uh, like Westlaw. Um, there's also other online law libraries like LexisNexis, or um, there's even kind of new uh, legal research resources out there. Case Next is, you know, a program that I know about where, again, it's advertising about bringing relevant um, resources to practicing attorneys. The main thing to understand is even if virtually what you're doing is, um, you know, your library card is your username and password into Westlaw, um, it's not that different in terms of getting into a bank of legal resources. It's just that one is presented in a virtual format and the other is presented in a physical format. So this is going to touch on very quickly um, an assignment that you have in this week. Uh, we do have a survey for you to take um, here at ALU because we are interested in making sure that you know those equivalent connections to the kinds of tasks you're doing basically to get to your resources as a practicing attorney either way. Um, but obviously there are certain ways that we can do it more strongly online versus um, necessarily going through a hard copy um, exercise or going to your brick and mortar li library. That being said, we're still very interested. Um, we know that you're tuning in from a variety of locations. So uh, please definitely, when you're working on your um, survey about, um, uh, it's in a week two, and it's going to focus very much on just hard copy legal research questions and logistics that you're finding out around you. You do not have to go into a physical law library, especially at this time. But we do ask that you attempt to look online at the library websites. You give a call. Um, this is just a way for you to build your information literacy in different angles and aspects. And overall, that will make you a better attorney, um, especially the usefulness of hard copy is there's many law offices that will still have, you know, a law library of of guides or select materials. Um, so there is a value to getting familiar with how those physically look like. Um, and I'll be speaking and kind of noting some of that as I'm going through the presentation. Um, but also, let's say if the internet goes out or it's a more urgent situation, uh, it's always good to keep um, your recognition of how these research steps are really equivalent to each other one way or another um, as just part of your practice. So going into Westlaw and what is uniquely what we have here at ALU and why we have it, uh, this is a purely external legal research database. So you get your registration key uh, from student services uh, very early on in program. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, while I'm not student services and can't respond to it here, uh, that department is happy to assist you on those questions. There's a couple of just logistical things I want to cover. So uh, the access is for a you know working adult law student on a part-time program. So that's why in terms of parameters, Westlaw is available from 4 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next morning because it's very much focused on giving that resource for a working adult or their estimate of working adult availability. You are able to use up to 40 hours per month for educational purposes only, not for other types of law projects where 
uh, perhaps you should be subscribing to Westlaw through different companies or entities. So uh, the encouragement generally from our administration is to use that time wisely. And I'm going to be going through, even um, as I go through this presentation, what I mean from that. One very broad categorical tip, which um, I always think cannot be emphasized enough, is that, uh, there, and this is a major difference between, let's say, being in a physical law library and an online law library. So in a physical law library, once you're in and sitting with your resources, it's not as if you are necessarily tolling more time. I mean, you're spending time, and of course, that's a precious resource, but it's not like that's being tracked or, you know, you're running out of your time to be with books. But with the online library, law library and your access, that is being counted up. That is weighing against an overall amount. That is eventually going into uh, typically a law firm invoice, right, paid to your uh, legal research entity. So it's very important, and some, uh, before I get into um, the more of the logins, just remember that while you're in Westlaw, you're very much in there to click into your different resources um, and to Keysight, which is uh, basically uh, the equivalent of shepherdizing that uh, Professor Sharp was mentioning. But it's a way to double check and vet how good the law is in a specific source. But um, so the things that really take machine intelligence, right, and where you're really gathering the benefits of the Westlaw attorney reference team. Um, focus your time around gathering that, but ways that you can download out, um, let's say, or send uh, a case for your reading offline. These are just smart and good ways to spend your time in system without it necessarily having uh, been expended because you're you're sitting with one screen. So just some important uh, things there. Um, so this part of the student center uh, manual, it's going to just go over registering what are your FAQ resources. This is a very basic look at all of that because once you log in to Westlaw, they already have built up a very set up knowledge center to take you through legal research skills, steps, and how to use their system. But um, definitely use this and definitely reach out to student services if you're having trouble with uh, your registration key or getting access into your account. Uh, with that, I'm going to pause just quickly here and check. questions about this um, highly administrative piece. Uh, from here, um, I'm going to be switching into how to use more of Westlaw. I think we're good, but if you have questions, of course, feel free to put that into the chat below. So um, where I'm going to go from here uh, just hold on. So I want to share with the group a, a document that is a good example of even how Westlaw has evolved talking about its services. Um, there's a lot of training that they are digging into and um, this is a file I can drop for example just into our core site um, but uh, there's a lot of different training here and I'm actually going to go through this quickly I will drop the file to the core site but I felt like this did do a great job of talking about how West law works in terms of what does it really give you when you're searching for a different case? How does it organize its information? And a lot of the focus here is really, again, remember, it's on information 
literacy, just doing it virtually, understanding how to get to resources and understanding what they are. And um, I'll talk about as well, you know, how this would look in a physical copy, but the benefit of Westlaw is that they have their attorney reference team that's constantly adding all this virtual knowledge and highlighting and qualifying of the materials that's going to be extremely helpful to you. So in this little allegory, and we're not going to read through it exhaustively, and I'll drop the file, but we have a wolf versus pig, and they're going to give you an example of how, when you're looking at a case in Westlaw, how the information's organized. So every Westlaw case uh, comes with its contents, a synopsis typically is worked on by the team. Head notes and key numbers are very important West terms about how they organize uh, the information. So the best way to think about it is if the cases were kind of sitting at ground level being generated by the court systems um, and right, those cases already are integrating all this commentary about different statutes or codes or other cases uh, that are leading to precedent. The head notes and key number system that West has, which is the benefit of the virtual interface, it's this team of attorneys that have um, reviewed many cases and have identified themes among them. They identified various stances uh, in common across different cases, or at least talked about in different cases. Uh, that uh, can link kind of a little universe of cases together. And just if you can imagine doing this in a physical setting, you know, you may have to grind and really read through the cases, look through, you know, secondary sources that are like legal encyclopedias, look at the cases that they contain. The physical work of going through and triaging um, into what is the world of cases I should read to really feel like I'm up and current about how this law is commented on in this jurisdiction is pretty exhaustive. And there's a reason that um, in terms of the physical research, um, when people say that you <laughs> made a lot of copies and went through it exhaustively, um, that's part of that. With the head notes and key numbers, that's a way electronically that you're working with a whole attorney team that has already reviewed cases for you and linked cases a certain way. And you'll see that um, uh, coming up. Um, going to text and opinion, of course, that's the text of the case. So here, here's an example of a synopsis and the focus of this attorney reference team, which you can kind of think like as of a super librarian desk in a way, um, they're able to give you a, a reader-friendly look at what that case is about and also tag in certain key terms. And that becomes very important for the headnote process. Um, oh, I think it froze a little there. Hold on one moment just to see if... Oh. So for some reason... Oh... There we go. Some reason it's a little um, it's a little hard to get all the text in there, but I will just go ahead and click through. Uh, going backwards, sorry. Oh, hold on one moment. And, okay, sorry, I'm having it slow down, so I am going to stop sharing it and let it reset a bit. Okay, going back, I think there's a lot going on in that PowerPoint, so, okay. All right, so... This PowerPoint, basically, they're going to illustrate and talk through what's going on in each piece of the information presented by West for you when you're looking up a case. 
So this is an example of how different themes, different keywords will be highlighted in each case, and it'll become this navigation map in a way above the level of the case text that um, you can see summaries about specific points, there's numbering, key numbers associated with it, and uh, that when you click on these, they link up further to other things. So, and I'm logged into Westlaw, so I can actually show this with a live case. Again, I'll upload this file later, but this is kind of the walkthrough friendly way to go through, you know, everything that this case could possibly have, what head notes it might have, and how it links to different key numbers in the West system, which means this is linked with a little universe of cases that have the same type of legal issue going on, or at least commentary as to that. So I'm going to continue to click here that had its different head notes. And then the actual text of the opinion, uh, this is what you could expect to see physically in a case reporter as well. Um, if you did not know, the case citations given to you, they're always going through a volume of the type of case reporter and then the page number. So you are getting the way to find that case in a physical volume uh, through the case citation. So um, here, this is noting that in the text of the opinion, where there was a different head note or key number highlighted, the actual text of each opinion is marked where the text is relevant to that legal issue or theme specifically. And so this is very helpful to see how a West law case is organized. I'm going to go now out to share my screen. And get into, I think it'll be here. Get into uh, an actual interface with the Westlaw search engine, in this case, Edge. So um, a lot of what I presented before, for example, if you go to a case, obviously you can search, oops, sorry. Hold on one moment. I think it logged out. So hold on one moment. Log in. Sorry about that. Okay. Start new session. So when you log in, my access had timed out. Uh, you can search specific case citations, and that's what I definitely recommend for you when you're working through your coursework. Specific citations given to you by your legal team, by your supervising attorney, they're, they're meant to help you explore thoroughly one case that's typically very relevant to what's at hand. Here I'm just going to pick randomly um, just to show the headnote system. So just going through and pulling through. Um, And this might be a more recent one. So typically when the attorney has gone through, let me, oh, these are all very recent ones. Um, when the, the attorney reference group has had time to process through cases and give their reading. So let me see. Uh, they're going to have more of that head note system that you saw in the illustration. Um, Professor Sharp, just to uh, get your thoughts here, is there a particular case citation you think that would be uh, good to go over with the class? I don't and I can type citation. that in and show. Can we? Um, on that, I don't have one memorized, but 
can we use a I like how you showed the um the the way the oh, West nice. is organized these things in key terms. So if you were to type in First Amendment. Yeah. That way we could show them how um Okay, great. It we'll will bring do that. Up court cases dealing with First Amendment. Got it. So uh, this is the Westlaw Edge system, and I'll go through to where they have um, further guidance or going over here. But just going into their system from the law student portal, if I were to type this kind of in a Google search form, just to see what's in the system. This is not search. necessarily so a more here, intentional search. What I um, would like to demonstrate is how to, in legal research, we start broad, and then we start to narrow down the issues until we exhaust our resources. And we know that we've exhausted them once we start to see repetitive cases come up. And that's a good indication that we have discovered all that there is to discover in this area of law. So First Amendment would be our very general area, but then we'd want to start getting concentrated and more focused mm -hmm. in our in our issue, whatever you know, cause of action that we're looking at, or um, maybe a defense or. Something. And I actually have a, a great a resource that I was I found here, um, where I thought uh, this is actually a public link. Just that's one of the resources, but it, it does a great job of pointing out. Let's say you didn't have specific cases that you were asked to link up to the issue that you're researching, which usually, in my opinion, are a very helpful way to start looking for the needle in the haystack, so to speak. There is a certain way that you start out your research broad. Again, if you are being asked really from scratch to explore that area. Like, so for example, what your professor said, you know, First Amendment. If all we know and we don't have a, a case that's on point about it is that uh, we're going to be responsible to search a specific issue there then you do start broad and there's a certain tier of legal resources that's great to start broad with. So those are like treatises, secondary resources, and those kind of give you a more landscape view of that area. Uh, then understanding that you are going to want to find the jurisdictional materials that are authoritative on that topic or inform that topic, you then drill tighter and down into you know what statutes and case law and regulations are relevant and then key citing is really a great tool um, in fact this is part of why when you have a specific case that's highly relevant to your topic it's great to key cite it and read that thoroughly and see how it links to other cases that are close on topic around it but you're really only using Keysight more the more you feel that you're getting cases that are highly relevant to your question that seem to represent more of the authoritative law in your question. And um, you don't necessarily you know, start trying to do that level of granularity out here. Um, just in terms of technique though, again, having a senior attorney or in the assignment, if it, it's clear that there's a certain case to check out or being pointed to you as highly relevant, it's great to be able to dig into that as much as you can and um, use the keynote system uh, and the headnote system and the key numbers to help you keep finding the most relevant um, broad and shorter materials there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go into... Uh, what got mentioned here. So First Amendment, just broadly looking through, um, there's a case that has been out, and I can see already here, 
um, compared to the U.S. Supreme Court cases that were very recent. Uh, this is a case that has had more time for the reference team to have, uh, you know, their work done on it. So you can already see here that synopsis, the West head notes, and the topics in those head notes, and the key numbers that help you uh, can see where this case fits um, within a larger set of themes and materials that are actually combining several cases. So I'm just going to scroll down through that here. And um, what I think is very cool about this is it is possible to go through this, for example, and let's say you know enough about your topic to know, oh, okay, I really, it's going to be about qualified immunity from a 1983 claim, let's just say. If you click here from that case, it's going to help link you up to other cases that were noted for similar issues. Um, and the key site, uh, even though you do that in detail more with cases, there's a general picture of you know, what's read or flagged as being outdated or highly questionable law versus yellow saying there's both good and bad. And um, if you see green as well, that can be a good sign that this is something that could be on point with the particular issue you're researching. So uh, that's just an illustration of that. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing because that helps me actually see the chat a little bit more. Um, and I, for the last part of my presentation, I am planning to go through user guides, but I just wanted to achieve here, you know, after talking about in general, um, how Westlaw really functions as just one kind of library. Um, I wanted to get into what is special about, about the layout of Westlaw Please. and lastly get into user yeah. guides. So in fact, it, with that, um, is it okay if I take I, five more minutes on back. that? Because I know. <laughs> okay. 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 Absolutely. And for... Students, um, I do see your questions. It's just when I share my screen, it kind of fills my whole screen. But make sure to put those in chat if you have them. And of course, you can access me at dean at alu.edu as well if you have a, a specific question from what I'm covering today. So this was just an exercise in seeing how Westlaw works. Um, I can tell you right now, if you spend a session and you key in uh, from your searches, the citations or the various things that have been in assignment for you, you're going to learn a lot just going through them and going through those head notes. Um, don't let that sum up everything of what you do. Just un understand that's a benefit of being able to sort of explore around that area um, relatively tightly uh, rather than kind of the whole shooting from the whole mountain down. Um, but that being said, and I, I have to say it's true for different types of research, um, someone who's really going to know their area well, whether it's for professional competency, which is a, a ethical issue for attorneys, or it's to know more about that area and to be able to argue more good arguments about that area than your opposing counsel, um, that has to do with how much you're going to take time strategically to look at your area. So there's a good time to go broad because you don't want to miss things. You want to have a wide net, but um, you want to tighten up smartly for the sake of time, for the sake of billing related to your um, legal research services. Um, and that's, that's really the art of doing legal research well. And so just know that this is something that, that everyone definitely um, works on and is only trying to improve and learning different things from their teams um, at law firms about. I did want to mention there is a very well set knowledge center at this point. I personally have not gone through all of it, um, but it has been continued to be 
uh, to be built out extensively over the past two to three years, having videos, having certifications now. So that's quite impressive. And I think these certifications, um, they are not even just things useful for your class or to present to your professor. Uh, Westlaw is a very well-known law library. So there's ways that uh, you are just getting some practical professional skills um, using that here. Uh, that being said, not all of us necessarily want to spend our time kind of taking courses on uh, the Westlaw search engine. Um, and of course, there's relatively limited time, you know, uh, per month or per class. So I did want to highlight here, and I will drop a link here. Um, Westlaw does include all kinds of uh, quicker looks at um, how to research and go through different things. So this is actually a public site that I'm dropping in and just noting that even for them, even though they have this whole built out knowledge center, they do have this kind of quick and dirty look at um, and links to to get into the system. So I will drop that page in there. That's just from the public website. So what I'm going to do is actually draw you into um, more of what you get to have through your Westlaw password access, which I think is more special. So uh, there are different ways that you may access this from your law student portal. I have a way of accessing this through the administrator portal, so I can't sync it up quite the same way. But um, there is a support center for students, faculty, administrators on Westlaw. And at this time, they do it for Westlaw Edge, which was what I was using. That's their newest version of their search engine. But they also have uh, Westlaw for Westlaw Classic, which is an older version as well. Either way, um, this is a uh, system that can offer training and support um, a lot of what just got mentioned at the Student Center Manual is updated and referenced here. Um, you can call for research support with a research attorney. Uh, and of course, there's technical support and account support as well. And Student Services works on the registration number piece of that. Uh, this is not the full built-out Knowledge Center with all the certificates. Um, and that can be a good thing because sometimes you just want to scan through and see what you know and see what you're missing. So, for example, let's say everything about getting started is done. Uh, they will have this section on case law, how to retrieve and search for cases, how to look for additional related authority, how to use the key system, how to search with Boolean terms, and how to check the status of a case with Keysight. Um, just to mention with Boolean terms, that's actually something more typical for an online search engine or law library. I do not think that's the most efficient way to go through Westlaw, even though Google and many search engines have made it more attractive to kind of drop a keyword and go. But it is there. And um, uh, just, uh, just know that there are smarter ways, like using case citations, like using the head notes to get to the universes of cases that are highly relevant to argue with. Um, I am going to click here into how to check the status of a case with Keysight because Keysight is an amazing function of Westlaw. And Shepardize is the name in LexisNexis. But what does this do? Again, it is the resource of Westlaw attorneys exhaustively going through different sources to then basically rate cases and see whether it's good law for you to be relying on or not. Again, going from the physical research perspective, um, you don't have someone waving a red flag at you if a case has been overruled or is outdated. But in last law, you basically can as long as you are looking through that and it is updated in real time. Um, a yellow flag mentions that there's some negative history, but not necessarily to the point that point of law is reversed or overruled. And of course, there's more here that um, helps you when you're scanning a list of cases, 
um, consider uh, what you're looking for depending on what you're advocating for. How does this all link up to professional competency and to you know serving your client um, competently, eth ethically? Well, given the resources that are out there and what your opposing counsel can use as well, it becomes important to be checking these things in real time. You never want to base an argument on a case that's clearly flagged for not no longer being good area uh, law in that area. So just it will make the difference between whether you are serving your client well as an advocate or putting them in a worse position. So um, I did want to highlight that, and I think it's this is still, you know, after many years of using this resource, it's still one of the most useful pieces about using. Westlaw, or of course, if you're using West Coast Nexus, shepherdizing. There's also more here about how to look through statutes, just in terms of, you know, how to enter in the citations and how to search uh, and um, navigate those. And what I would just say to this, and this is something I'm happy to take offline and more time for students who are curious. Um, there's a lot of different legal resources out there, and it can be hard to think about. Oh, I will, by the way, um, zoom back in here to see the chats. There's a lot of legal resources out there, you know, primary sources, secondary sources, um, statutes, codes, and it can get, it can start feeling like a buffet, really, of of what do I look at and what do I prioritize in, in order to um, talk about a legal issue coherently. Just remember that you know those secondary resources are there because it's acknowledging that there's a lot to synthesize in for anyone when they're going through and really trying to understand a legal topic well, especially in real time. You know, because something can come out this week, like those Supreme Court cases, and be absolutely important to your topic. So the most important thing you can be doing is, you know, just understanding that the secondary sources help you get a look at the general area, help you dig in and find those primary, current, on topic, not overruled um, legal documents you know, cases that will be relevant to uh, bring up in terms of arguments for your client. And if you are not just advocating one side, you know, um, for example, in my work as a law clerk, it was very important there not to just be arguing one side, but to look for the types of legal research that opposing sides would find on a given issue and to give a balanced summary. Um, a tool like Westlaw, uh, which is, it's that larger database, but it's also this way to dig through the information electronically uh, in a quicker way is, is invaluable. So, uh, and with that, I know that there is, there is definitely more that can be said. This is definitely a topic that can take more time. But the goal of this was really to help you understand what you're doing with the resource that's available for you, understand what that resource is, um, Westlaw, what parameters are there, but also how to use it smartly and effectively for your assignment. Um, I think this it's great that we have a class like this as well. There's not always a chance to dig in um, legal research in all of our classes, but Absolutely what you do here and the smart techniques you find here link up to what you can do professionally as well. So with that, I, I see all clear from Steven from a while ago. So um, I don't think I see more comments from the seven. Uh, I hope that this has helped you. I helped you. This has made you excited about sort of the toolkit you have for legal research that's here. And you know, not against hard copy legal research at all, um, but uh, we are still trying to explore more ways to do that, especially online. So when you do your survey assignment this week, just 
be frank about what you're finding locally and near you. That's going to be good input for us as we're trying to evolve that area here. And with that, I, I do need to turn it back, but um, you can reach me at dean at alu.edu if you have questions. And I am also leaving that legal resources page with uh, the public links you can access that don't need Westlaw uh, passwords.